Well, hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of KMRD Radio Stuff. My name is Mike. If you haven't already, do yourself a favor, click that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up, and also click the bell so you're notified when I make new videos. Today, I want to take a look at the least expensive HF radio on the market, uh, as far as I know. This is the Zygu G1M. This is a QRP radio. It's good for 80 meters, 40 meters, 20 meters, and 15 meters. 5 watts uh, output. It'll receive from 0.5 all the way up to 30 megahertz. It'll also receive AM. It doesn't transmit on AM, though. And it does single sideband and CW. So let's fire this up and see what we got. Stay tuned. All right, so before we fire this up, let's take a look at what all you get in the box. Because some people like to know that stuff. So right off the bat, we have our instruction manual. Full disclosure, it's very, very basic. It's, it's enough to kind of get you to turn on the radio and show you what all the buttons do, but that's about it. And then we have what looks to be probably a warranty card. Um, it's all in Chinese. I'm not sure what it says, but pretty sure it says subscribe to k Marty Radio stuff. And we've got some foam packing here. And then we have our power cord, which is their standard kind of barrel connector. And then we've got uh, just some tinned leads. You can throw some power poles or whatever kind of connector you put on there. Then we have our hand mic that also has a little speaker jack on there. So if you want to plug in headphones or something. And this is just a tippering sleeve plug. Plugs into the face of the radio. And kind of feels plasticky. Keep in mind, this is a, a very uh, entry-level radio. So this, this kind of feels like, uh, like a Bofang-type microphone you might get. And it's got this little swivelly clip on there. So that's kind of nice, I thought. We also get a programming cable for uh, maybe some software updates or something. I'm not sure. And then the radio itself, which is very, very tiny, very lightweight. But before we fire it up, I just want to show you the size of this thing. Here is a Bofang for scale. It's just a regular UV5R, well, plus. And uh, it's literally like not even two Bofangs wide and maybe one and, uh, one and a half Bofangs long and then probably a Bofang and a third tall. It's just, it's tiny. And just taking a quick walk around the radio, on the top left, we have our on-off slash volume knob. We've got our VFO. This also pushes in. This is kind of like a selection function when we get into uh, some of these menus. We've got a lock button here that uh, will lock the VFO. And this is also how you can access some of the memories or the menus rather, excuse me. And then all these different buttons serve different functions. So, so that's what's on the front. Um, tiny little, and this is probably an inch and a quarter screen across. It's, it's very tiny, but it actually is nice and bright. You can see it. Um, no problems uh, interfacing with it, so that's pretty neat. And uh, on the back here, we've got our standard BNC jack, a nice ground lug. We've got uh, inputs for our accessory, comm, our keyer, a speaker, and then our 12-volt uh, DC in. And then on the top, we've got our speaker. Not the loudest speaker in the world. I wish it would be a little louder, but we'll show you that here in a second. And I also forgot to mention, uh, this is your microphone input here. It's just an eighth inch jack. So let's turn this guy on and see what we got. So right away we can see, not a lot on the screen, but it's got everything we need. So this little R here just tells you if you receive or transmit. You can see we're in USB. Got a nice easy to read display on the A band. We've got uh, our B band, an S meter here. And then down in this very bottom line, this is our real time spectrum scope. Now this is adjustable, this is pretty low right now, but we can actually go into the menu and configure uh, how high or low we uh, are receiving that signal. So we can tune around and find some signals here. Guy's coming in S7, S8, so that's pretty sweet. No, oh, that's, that's 9 plus 10 now. Jeez, look at that. So, it's, like I said, it's not the loudest. I wish it would be a little louder, but what can you do? So, this radio uses these multi-function buttons for various functions, and then they're all distributed across basically three different menu pages. So, let's take a look at that. Again, keep in mind, this is an entry-level radio. It's pretty basic, but 
it's going to do what you need it to do. It's about 269 bucks at the time of this recording, so you know, keep that in mind. So we can access the menu one of a couple ways. By hitting this lock button, we can get in here, and now we're in what is the first page. So we've got this MD. Let's go back in there. It goes away after a couple seconds. So MD uh, is for mode switching. So if we press that, we can see we can cycle. Now we're on CW, now we're on AM, now we're on LSB, and back to USB. And then we have, uh, if we long press it, this is how we can change. Now the preamp is on, you see that P, now the preamp is off. So if you need to boost your signals a little bit, hold down that guy. It's gonna take a little bit of memorization to get all these, but I figure once you kind of play around with it a bit, you'll probably get it down. The next one here, the, the B minus, this is our band minus, okay? So to go down the band, and then we have our band plus. Now if we hold this in, this is our memory write, and then we can save it to whatever channel we want. I don't feel like doing that. The B plus, obviously we're gonna increase the band. And then if we hold that down, let's get in the amateur portion here. <laughs> and then if we hold that down, that would clear the channel, but since there's no channels there, no valid memory, so we get that little error, but that's how you would do that. And then the TS is gonna be our step for tuning. So if you really wanna fine tune it or if you wanna go really fast, I usually tend to keep mine there. And then uh, if we long press it, whoops, it'll go back, which this is actually really nice going, just being able to go back. This is not something that a lot of radios have. It's like, whoops, I wanna go back. So you can just long press that. So that's a pretty neat feature. Something kind of simple, but you know, sometimes it is the little things. And then uh, this last button here is our VFO A and B switching. And then if we long press it, it is uh, frequency or channel mode, which uh, frequency channel mode switching, but we don't have any uh, channels selected, so we're not gonna switch any of those. Now we don't have to hit this lock button slash menu button. We can just, you know, if I want to A, B, we can just hit the button and it'll go to whatever uh, page we're in, whatever menu page. But now if we press the lock button again, you can see we have different options. So this is page two. And the first one is KS, which is our automatic keying. So we can change our key speed, uh, however fast or slow we want it. If you're using uh, one of them keyer type things, you can save that. And uh, long press doesn't do anything on this one. And then KM is our auto key mode. So right now we're in manual. Oh, then we use the VFO. So manual, auto L, auto R, and then back to manual. I'm a straight key guy. Not that I'm really much of a CW guy, but that's what I use. And then if we long press the KM, that's where we can change our uh, side tone. IMB is iambic mode A, B, there you go. And then if we uh, save that, and if we long press it, it's the code ratio setting, which I don't know enough about CW to know what that means, but for those of you guys that do, it does that. And then the CSN, this is actually, uh, you can set, so when you, when you power the radio on, you can have it display your call sign. So that's pretty cool. Definitely like that feature. As opposed to putting like a sticker with your call sign on your radio, you just know if you boot it up, it'll say, you know, your call sign there. So that's pretty cool. And then third page of functions. So we, we hit the lock button to cycle through the different pages. So now this is the third page of functions. This first one, this SCL is our spectrum scale setting. So if we hold that, the lower we go, the higher, and we can push in the button, the VFO. See how the, the spectrum scope just got really big? Well, I don't want it that big. So you can dial it in. If you go a higher number, save that, push the VFO. Now it's a lot lower, so not quite as sensitive. So that's, that's a nice feature. Then we can hit the second one, which is our display mode section. And this will show, I had it on scope and S meter. You can just show the scope or you can show a big scope. Let's see what that looks like. So, and it just gets rid of the VFOB and the S meter there. So, uh, whoops, let's go back there. I like it on scope and S meter. 
Then our SPL is our split function. Uh, not really sure how to set that, but uh, that's it, it doesn't give any instructions whatsoever, but somehow you might could do split with this. I'm not sure. I don't think it'll be doing much contesting with this radio though, so not too much of a big deal. And then BP is the system tone switch. So you turn your beep on or off. Whoops. Somehow. Oh, okay. So you just push it beep on or off. Okay. I don't want any beeps, so we'll leave those off. And then version, we can see what version of software we're on. Let's see if we can hear anyone. That's the radio full blast. I think the scope is, is is pretty great for someone starting out, you know, for a sub $300 radio to have a real-time scope like this. I mean, my uh, FT891 doesn't even do this. It just takes a quick snapshot of it. So, uh, you know, it's not a waterfall, but so what? This is really nice. This is, uh, this is quite usable. And it's got, notice when I'm tuning around, there's like a center line there. So you can see where you're actually tuning to. So it's actually pretty easy to find signals. This is cool. I like this little guy. Let's see, let's go say hi to all the FT8 guys. There you are. <laughs> but look at that. I mean, it's, it's actually totally functionable. This is, this is neat. All right, enough of that. So let's take a look and see what uh, kind of power it puts out. This is a five watt radio. There is no options to change the power. It's just, you can have any power you want so long as it's five watts. So let's see if it actually puts out five watts. I also wanna take a look at the current draw, uh, just on receive and the current draw on uh, transmitting. So let's take a look at that. All right, so we can see, uh, I put it on 80 meters here, got it hooked up to our watt meter, hooked up to a dummy load, and also hooked up to our PowerWorks watt meter. We're pulling about 0.39 amps. Uh, which I'm actually kind of surprised that it's that high. I think the G90 pulls about 0.55 amps. So uh, still not bad. I mean, you can run, I'm hooked up to a three amp hour battery right now. You could run all day with this thing. Uh, so I want to see what we actually get for power output. And also I want to see how much current this thing draws. So I've got it uh, tuned up to 80 meters here on the low side uh, on CW. Let's key down and see what we get. So about seven and a half watts on CW on the lower portion. Let's go up a little bit, a little bit higher. 7.3 pulling eh, almost two amps. Not bad at all. Let's go up to like the 75 meter portion here. Some radios in different parts of the bands and different frequencies will actually put out different wattages. Uh, so it's nice to see if it's consistent across the board. And seven watts, so we lost about a half watt, still pulling almost two amps, so not too bad. So that's 80 meters. And we'll do the same thing again here, low side of 40. Key up about six and a 6.3, 6.2. Pulling a little bit higher current there, 2.05 amps. Still not bad. Let's go up a little bit. Yeah, about the same. 2.05 amps there, current draw. Let's go towards the top here. Yeah, about the same, a little bit higher current, 2.05, but totally doable. 20 meters, let's see what she does, pulling 0 0.45, 0 0.47 amps, so it's pulling a little bit different current draw depending on the band. I've seen that happen on some other radios, so that's pretty typical. Yeah, 6.4 watts, 1.88 amps current draw on the lower portion of the band. Let's go up a little bit. About the same there, pretty much exactly the same. And let's go up to the higher part. And pretty much the same there. And lastly, let's take a look at 15 meters, pulling 0.41 amps. Eh, six watts, 6.1 watts at the bottom end. Let's go up a little bit. 
a little bit more power, pulling 1.7 amps. Up a little bit more. Gaining power a little bit, pulling about the same current. And towards the top here, 6.6, .6, pulling about 1.8 amps. So definitely delivers more than promised, which is nice. It's a five watt radio and we've been getting uh, six and a half ish watts out of it. So I actually had this, I'm on a, I'm plugged in just to this little BioNO uh, battery here, this little three amp battery. Uh, I had it plugged up to my power supply, but I wanted to get this in the shot and this is the better way to do it. And I was actually getting about eight watts on 80 meters. So uh, with, on a 30 amp power supply. So it actually puts out a little bit more than uh, what you pay for. So that's pretty good. And one other thing that might be worth noting, if you do go out of band, unlike some other radios, this will not key up. Hear that beep? That means we're out of band. But then when we go back in, Bob's your uncle. So it will prevent you from transmitting out of band, which is uh, definitely a nice feature. So that's about it, gang. Just a quick walk through all of the functions and kind of showing you everything about this little radio. I think this thing is neat. You know, is it for everybody? No, but it's, you know, if you're new to ham radio or maybe you're new to portable, especially, you know, maybe you have a 7300 or a 991 or something at home and you just want something less expensive to take out into the field, 269 bucks at the time of this recording and uh, I'll leave a link in the description if you follow that uh, I'll leave a coupon code uh, to Radioddity's website where you can get 15 bucks off so uh, that will apply to just about anything I think it's over like a $65 purchase you'll get 50, 15 bucks off at Radioddity so thank you to Radioddity for sending this to me for review I've had fun with this over the last couple days it's uh it's a pretty neat little radio <laughs> so very compact it's like the size of my head not even uh, so yeah, inexpensive, very lightweight, portable, 80 meters, 40 meters, 20 meters, 15 meters. You know, what else can you say? CW and uh, sideband, throw a resonant antenna on it or have an external tuner or something like that and you're on the air, man. So uh, pretty, pretty neat little radio. So anyway, thanks so much for watching, guys. I really appreciate every single one of you and uh, we'll catch you next time on another episode of KNMRD Radio Stuff, 73 guys.